The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks. How are you doing today? Welcome here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I am your host, Daryl Martin. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to give me a call. I'll be happy to answer them for you. You can reach me right at 877-927-6648. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and do a quick market wrap to see where the market is right now and catch up whether you're listening online, on the web, or on the radio, wherever you're at in the world right now. Uh, we got, let's see here, we got the S&P futures is up eight points. We got the Russell is currently up five and uh, six points there now. And we got the NASDAQ is up three after filling in the gap on the day. We got the Dow up 52. And looking over at our metals, we got copper up 0.034. That's a 1% move. And we got gold up six points. Silver is barely moving, 0.064 right now. Um, after a big up move, and then it pulled on back. We'll go through and we'll look at each one of these markets here in a moment. And then checking out uh, the energy sector, we got our natural gas has been exploding to the upside and then doing a pullback. And, I mean, it took off after that report, and uh, it just it didn't look back. And now it's, it's thinking about turning around now, so I'm hoping to do a little pullback there. But it is up 2.6% right now on the day. Looking over at oil, it's up a buck on the day, um, and so it's uh, definitely uh, made a nice little move, up 1%. And we got corn and soybeans, the ags. Wow, they are back, and they are fierce. Corn up 5% on the day, up 37 points right now. Soybeans up 39 points on the day, 2.5%. And I had a great question that came in uh, the other day. I said, well, you know, on your soybeans, it seems like the number is just off because it's so big. I mean, like you have the deviations, uh, half a deviation is 26 points, and the full deviation is 53 points. I'm like, that's what it is right now. There is more volatility built into soybeans than there is any market right now. Um, it, it's absolutely nuts in comparison. And I looked at all the deviation levels, I looked at all the implied volatilities, the percentage moves. I mean, it is all about soybeans. It's crazy what's going on in soybeans just day after day, what's become the new norm um, is is just you know off the charts, and you can see right here. I'll pull up a chart on soybeans, and I'll get back over to the market wrap for you. But uh, if I go in, and you can see that just an average true range point on soybeans, uh, we're looking at you know just a massive, massive move, and it's day after day after day. I mean, you see this right here. We're at fifteen twenty two up to fifteen sixty three, and a lot of that move happening overnight. And I've been trying to figure out the best way to really take advantage of that on Nadex because, uh, you know, sometimes you get that move and then sometimes it happens overnight. So what are you going to do? Because uh, the Swabian markets, you know, aren't really opening up then. Well, one of the things I figured out is they have the weekly binaries. And you can go in and you can actually trade the weekly binary, but with the intent to close it the next day. And, um, you know, as you're watching the market. So let's say, you know, you bought Friday's binary on Wednesday and then the market, you know, flies up. You're watching it, and uh, you know it's up, up, up right now. You're just, you know basically pushing up your stop on that. I'd be definitely having a very tight stop at this point, but uh, the main reason just being that you know we we rose, we didn't really break out of the volume there. It pulled back a little bit. It's still not doing anything significant in volume on the soybean side, but you can put the binaries on, and you can take advantage of simply just uh, moving the binaries on the weekly binaries, so that we don't miss these big overnight surges from the ag reports and everything else that have been coming out this week. Um, anyway, so let's go back and uh, get back on the market watch. I'll leave the uh, deviation levels up there, so that way you can uh, check them out. And uh, you know, you may have to maximize your screen. By the way, you can hit Control Plus and Control Minus on a browser to zoom in and out, and that's really helpful when you need it. Um, and then Control Zero puts it back to normal. So it's nothing like zooming in and you're like, how in the world, you know, do I get back? Just hit Control Zero. Or you know, I've actually done this before before I knew this, and I couldn't figure out how to get everything back to normal. Control Zero. But uh, anyways, I'll leave it up there so you can zoom in yourself and look at what part you want to look at. But going on back over, that's the eggs. Like I said, they're back. They're fierce. And uh, 
We'll see if this trend continues, but uh, it's just a massive uh, move on up. It hadn't really broken out of the, the recent highs, but uh, if it does continue, it'll be impressive. And uh, we got over here, we're looking at now our currencies, wrapping it up on the currencies. We got the Euro dollar moving up 61 pips right now on the day. We got the Aussie dollar up 37, the pound dollar up 34. We got the U.S. franc down 53, the U.S. Canadian down 41, and the U.S. yen is up 20 pips on the day. So that concludes our market wrap side of things. And uh, just do a quick uh, summary on the fundamentals as I like to do with you each and every day. So hopping on over and pulling up the fundamental reports. What happened last night? What happened? What's happening right now? What's happening tomorrow and the rest of the week? So that way you can have proper expectations about how you want to place your trades. So last night uh, we did have some move in the Aussie. We had some Aussie reports and had some pretty cool trades uh, going off if you were trading that. And um, I can sort of show you right here what went on over in the Aussie. And um, right here we got odd USD. All right. So what happened last night? Well, the Australian dollar, the Aussie, released their employment change and unemployment report. Now, their unemployment report, um, their employment change did come in better than expected. And so that was obviously uh, a very good thing. Um, now, they did have to revise some numbers, um, you know, down a little bit for past numbers, but... They expected it to be uh, 5.1 thousand for the employment change, and it came in at 14.5. And in this case, a higher number is a good number. So this is the uh, data that they release. They release it uh, after the month ends, and uh, it has a pretty decent impact on the market. It's basically just a change in the number of employed people during the previous month. Okay, and uh, if you want to know where that report's at, you can always go over to abs.gov.au. And that's where the report gets released. And you can um, always, you know, media releases, labor force, all that stuff is on here. So you can see exactly how that works. And you see right there uh, the numbers that they put up. So anyways, uh, abs.gov.au. So if you're an Aussie dollar trader, that's one of those uh, links you need to be uh, saving right there. Okay. And anyway, so let's uh, narrow down. Let's go in and look at what happened on the Aussie dollar last night and back out a little bit. Okay. So... Again, great thing about this kind of trade is this is if you're an e, if you're a full time trader, um, you know you may not be trading at seven thirty or maybe you are who knows, but uh, you know if you're a part time trader you got a full time job, then you may be needing to trade at seven thirty in the evening. Okay, so and again that's seven thirty you know um, central time so eight thirty eastern time, and if we go over and we narrow it down and we look at it, you can see where the report came out, and uh, you go in. And boom, it explodes, it takes off. And so anytime this happens, of course, you want to have some profit targets, right? you got to have you know, some expectations um, of where you want to take your profits. You can see it sort of flew up and then just sort of flattened out for the rest of the day. So if you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, Aussie dollar took off, I'm getting in. Well, you're a little late to the party. So what were the proper expectations if you're looking to do this trade? Well, that's where the deviation levels come in. So let's go ahead and check out Aussie dollar. And I'll zoom in on it for you. And we'll uh, go to the upside. So right over here, and uh, maybe zoom out a little bit just so I can make sure you're seeing the right column. And we got to move. Our first move that we're expecting is to move up to 1.0274. That really is the you know half deviation move. A lot of times that's what we're expecting unless there's something just massive. That was big, but it wasn't overly massive. And then um, you know from there, where do we expect it to go? Well, 1.0288. So at 1.0274, you're tightening your stops, okay? At 1.0288, you're tightening your stops. You're probably taking some profits, and uh, unless you see volume proving otherwise. And then at 1.0310, unless you definitely see volume, you're probably getting out, and possibly, if you don't see strong volume, going the other way, sort of like on NASDAQ this morning. And uh, I'll pull that up here in a minute. We'll talk about it as well. But so let's go over this. Look at the Aussie dollar trade. Anyway, so you get in and you buy a spread or you buy the Forex if you want to risk a whole lot of money. You buy the spread if you want to cap your risk or you buy a binary. And uh, you're basically having a profit target right up here. Again, we can uh, review those for you. You got 1.0274, 1.0288. So 1.0274 is right here. Okay. And then uh, this is your first profit target. And then 1.0288 is right there a little bit higher and uh, so you can see 1.0288 and that'll let you see exactly where you want to be looking at 
in order to uh, take your profits on um, the Aussie dollar itself. And that lets you select your strike because how far you expect it to move is really going to have a big impact on what you decide to do as far as what strike you choose and where you decide to get out. So if I choose a strike and I'm like, okay, I think I'll get a 1.027, you know, four up here, 1.0270, and I choose that strike, then what I'm going to be able to do is go, okay, okay, now get me out of that strike when it hits 50 bucks. Why? Well, because the reason that strike can become worth $50 is when it's at the money, all the binaries are worth $50. Or maybe I bought a spread, and so I can set a take profit right around that price. So 1.0270, get me out when it hits that price level. Okay? So there's a lot of different ways that I can trade it, but no matter what, I need to have proper expectations on my trades. And the great thing is this allows you to trade. And I mean, even if you're a full-time trader and you just want to throw on the Aussie dollar trade before the news announcement, you can hop on here, throw the trade on, and uh, do it on your iPhone or whatever in five seconds. You know, I mean, it takes no time at all. And uh, you just need to you know, have some proper expectations and you need to have a exit strategy. And uh, you can see, I mean, it got right up to that, 1.0288. It literally just stopped. And it peaked on it a little bit, and then it came back down, and now it's actually at the half deviation level, and it's staying there. So, and one of the things I'll do sometimes is I'll actually stack these on top of each other, and I'll go in, and I'll look at the futures, because you need to see some volume data, okay? And yeah, I know some brokers will give you some volume data and everything else, and that's great. But, um, you know, I want to see, like, the real volume data, the exchange volume data. And so, you know, I'll back out. I'm going to look at 10-minute charts. And um, then we'll, you know, that I like 10 minutes a lot. And then um, hop on over here and uh, we'll see what's going on down. And you know, we'll pull 10 minutes here. Zoom in a little bit and then we'll try to line them up. There we go. And let's see here. Let's line this up. So we're just really looking at the end of the day. A little bit more. And um, then we'll be right on there. So let's see, back that up a little bit more. There we go. So let's see what, 16, 15. Okay. So do about that, and that lines us up you know, pretty close on the charts. I can even move it over a little bit. And now I can see the volume. I can see the volume breakouts and see what's going on. And so I see, obviously, this shoots up. That gives me a positive buy signal. So if I want to keep going, okay, well, I can go up to the 0.7, maybe even the 0.1, uh, or the 1.0 deviation level there. And, again, that's not standard. It's implied deviation. And, uh, anyway, so that moves on up. And... Gets up here, and then I go, okay, well, what happened on that? Well, it broke out with pretty good volume. Um, you know, it didn't really break the volume high on the uh, screen right here. But uh, let's see here. Let me uh, do a little reset. I got a little tech support thing saying that we don't have anything showing. So let me pull it back up. There we go. Is that coming through loud and clear for you? And I'll be uh, right back after this commercial break. So we'll go back over that, and I'll show you that chart. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And I uh, got that charts back up and showing. And so right here, what we got going on is we got some volume. <laughs> and uh, anyways, yeah, we had a little window shake go on there. Uh, but anyway, so shake is what I said. <laughs> but anyways, it goes on up, and we had some volume bust out. Not as much as the news, but nevertheless, we still had some. And really, I mean, one of the things is it wasn't as much as the news. So what does that mean? Well, that means that probably the move is over. All right, we we don't have more volume pushing us higher. And you can see, I mean, you do get one more little pullback and one last little bump, but really the move was over. So. Uh, with that in mind, it's you know that's the time to you know definitely tighten your stop, and uh, if you're long in this trade, and uh, possibly look at potentially going short, and um, you know you see another pullback, you know okay low volume, low volume. You actually see a little bit of volume picking up there, then you see a little pickup on the volume on the way up, and you're okay maybe things are going to be okay, and this one fails to break out of the volume of this last high here, so we're still not seeing a big volume breakout. Pulls on back some more. And now you're seeing volume actually exceed. You're having bigger volume exceed these volume bars. So now you're getting a little bit concerned. Now you're getting a lot of volume to the downside. Definitely showing, okay, the move is definitely over. But this was your first clue. This was your confirmation. And um, so at this point, you can maybe like sell a binary. Maybe you just sell an at the money binary, one to one risk reward ratio. So, or maybe you go short on a spread. Or maybe you're looking out of the money binary if you think, depending on how far you think it's going to move back. You know, do you think there's a big reason for it to move a whole lot? 
So there's different ways to do it, but the number one thing that you can always do is use it to help you tighten your stops and take your profits. So that's our Aussie dollar move right there. And uh, let's see, let's go ahead and let's check out the NASDAQ. So I was short on this puppy this morning. I was glad I was. That worked out really well. And uh, basically had two trades going on. I had the gap fill play and I had a deviation level. Oh, I'll, and I also basically just one of my technical seasonal analysis trades that I do had a short trade. So when I combined all those together, it added up to a lot of shorts on NASDAQ. I had three reasons to go short. And uh, so let me pull that back up. Let's see if I can find that after uh, all those windows got uh, thrown off there. There we go. And on the NASDAQ, so we had to move up to our high here was about 27, 45, 46, whatever. And um, so we look down, we got 27, like 54 is as high as we expect. It's moving on up and, you know, we're like, you know, just a matter of a few points away. Nothing's happening. Um, and here was sort of the, the biggest clue um, that I need to be aware of was, you know, we had one, just this crazy stuff happening yesterday morning. I mean, just look at these huge bars going on. But um, it broke out. But look at this, okay? It broke out of the high of yesterday, but there's no volume at all. I mean, there's no commitment going on. And then all of a sudden, right out of the gate, you get this drop, okay? And, yeah, I know we expect big moves and everything else, but you just broke a high, and you immediately drop. That's a, that's what you call a clue, okay? You have a big drop right after breaking a high, and it's on volume. That's a good sign to go short. And so that was my number one clue to go short. Um, we were approaching a deviation level. That was a clue. And then uh, the other clue would be the fact that the market closed right here. It gapped up. And so now I'm looking for the gap fill play. And uh, so, of course, it did fill the gap. And uh, the other ones are working on it. We'll see if they get uh, on down there or not. But uh, the NASDAQ was the one that I was uh, sort of banking on today, going down and filling that gap in. And the Russell still has four more points to go. And the S&P has six more. And, uh, but, yeah, if we go look at uh, the Russell real quick, you can see it's working on it. So we'll see if this one gets the gap filled. It still has a bit to go there. But, uh, but back on NASDAQ. So that was definitely, I mean, a solid play for you. You could take advantage of. You had multiple reasons, like I said, the higher volume um, after a breakout in the opposite direction, and then the gap fill play and the deviation level. So just a lot of things adding up, saying, hey, you might want to look at going south. And then as it goes south, okay, as soon as you get that gap, you want to probably take some profits off the table because it is, I mean, it's amazing how often it will stop after a gap fill or go the other direction. And uh, you really need to see some tremendous volume to give you some confidence that's going to keep going. But at least take off some of your profits. And that's what I did. I took off pretty much almost all. Actually, I took off, I think, every trade I had on NASDAQ off uh, once it filled the gap. And uh, right here, you check this out and notice, like, we're breaking it. But then we're breaking it even lower on less volume. And you can see this candle bar is pulling back up there. So, and then we go on over here. I've got bar charts, but, you know, whatever. The same thing at the end of the day. And then, um, but pulling back up, pulling back up, and still getting some volume. And then it starts pushing down, and you're not getting any kind of incredible volume. Broke a new low, still don't have incredible volume. So, you can write it short, but the great point was this morning. All right, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back after this break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, just pulling a few things up for you. We're just looking at this and sort of seeing where the NASDAQ might go. Right now, it is pushed to the low right there at that price level. What was that? That was the low of yesterday's open market hours right there. Okay? So not only did we break the gap, we now hit that. And now we're going to see if it can break the uh, low or the overnight. And that was a high-volume bar low right there if we check that out. Okay? So if we're looking at this... There was a lot of price consensus going on, and uh, on this low price here, you can just see this volume bar if we zoom on in right there. So you can see a massive volume bar right at this price level. So it's sort of working on that, trying to see if it can break through it. If it can, it'll have this price down here. We did a little spike, but there wasn't any volume to get in its way, really, but there also wasn't any orders to keep it there, and it came on back up. So right now it's working on that. If it were to make a big move and break through with volume, the move down could be go down to about 26.91 would be the expectation of movement on the way down. So if it actually can break through that level, that's uh, where we'd expect to go. But we do need to see some strong volume to actually have that expectation. And uh, so you could do a low risk binary trade if you wanted to at that price level. But right now, there's just not a whole lot guaranteeing for you to go there. But um, you know what? I mean, either way, it is moving. If we break this level, you know, you might want to go ahead and just join in on the ride. And again, 26.91 being the the uh, target possibly by day's end if the market decides to continue moving on down. Now, the other thing we got over here we can look at, let's check out, you know, with, everything, with this moving down and how much it's pushing everything else down is looking over at the Russell. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just flip over so we don't lose our chart there. 
and going here to the Russell and looking at it and seeing is she going to make it. So uh, let's see here. We're getting close. So three more points. And uh, tick tock, tick tock, right? By the end of the day. So I got a, a gap fill play on. I'm trying to get that gap. I'm going to see if I get it. Have a pretty nice uh, risk reward scenario built in there. More than double uh, the money there. And uh, so we'll see what happens. But it's pushing. Not real excited about what I'm seeing on the volume here. But um, you know what? It's a uh, lunch hour. Volume's going to be a little bit lighter anyway. So um, let's see. On this side of things, what do we have going on? I'm just trying to see if there's any other trades that line up really well. We already got the short on right here that we had on the NASDAQ this morning. That first take profit. And uh, now I've got to find the next one that will add up. Um, all right. So now that we got the Russell down, now that we talked about that, we can check out. Let's just uh, wrap up a couple of the other basic ones. And let's see here. We got the S&P. It is, it is starting to push. You can see they're all starting to think about moving on down. So I think the S&P is definitely very close to filling that gap in. Um, it's only got a few points there, too, and it's. I would not be shocked at all to see it hit 1427. And um, we're going on over. We'll check out the Dow. So the Dow right here, looking at this move and what it's got left on the day, really. Let's see. We got, uh, you know, 30, 40 points there. So, that, you know, a little bit of move left still on the Dow. Uh, maybe even more than that. Yeah, no, about 30 points. So 30 points left on the Dow, but uh, it's... Starting to break its uh, intraday low there, or you know, like current open session low. It just pushed on it. So really, the the, the trick right now is we, if we see some volume, we know we're going for that gap fill. If it breaks the gap fill, then where does it go next? And that's what you want to have that that target price price on for, like we just did over on Nasdaq, and uh, see if it can keep up with the expectation. So we can see right here, it's pushing down. It's trying to make a new low um, from the overnight session. And uh, it actually is picking up quite a bit in volume, so that's good news on that move down. And so the lowest expectation we have right there, 26.91. And uh, so there's you a potential trade set up. And uh, we just now want to see this little bit of move down to where it breaks this. But when it breaks this, that might be where it just drops. Last time it did break it, it got down to here. What happened? It couldn't keep going. And uh, that's 27.14.5 on the NASDAQ. So, a uh, quick summary on that for you. Let's go ahead and check out silver now. Silver uh, definitely, uh, as flat as it is, it definitely had some moves. Um, it went up and then it shot on back down. And uh, we can check that out real quick here. And uh, let's go into our chart settings. And let's make sure that we can highlight the extended. This makes it easier to uh, see your extended session whenever you're looking at the trades. And... Um, so we can see, obviously, it did a gap fill, and it did it fast. <laughs> so, I mean, silver just, bam, filled it in, you know, like right out the open within, you know, 20 minutes now. Of course, silver opens earlier in the morning. And uh, if you don't know where, like, you know, these hours, you want to know what the pit hours are, and the pit's closed now in silver. But if you don't know where they're at, hop on over. Most of the futures that you're going to be trading, um, except for, like, ICE, uh, the Russell there, um, you can get right here on CME Group. So you can go over here, you can go to Globex, and you can hop on over. And you can click on, you know, if you're looking at silver, you're obviously going to go over to the metal section. Once you're on metals, scroll down a little bit, find the silver contract right here, SI silver. And then you can go to contract specs. And under contract specs, you can see what the open outcry hours are, okay? And uh, so it shows you, you know, um, basically 725 to 1225 central time. And that's really what's going to be mirrored. You're going to see in the Nadex markets as far as when they close, they'll usually close when the pit closes and uh you know so we had that big movement right there and so as soon as that open outcry came in they just i mean they just slammed the thing down and silver really hadn't done just a massive move um on the upside but i mean they just they took it on back and then looking over at gold we got the gold contract right here and sitting it came in it did the same thing so the metals really just were going for filling in gold didn't completely fill in but uh, it definitely, you know, got pretty close here. We got a low of 1766 and a close on the gold market yesterday of 1765. So, I mean, we're talking about, a, you know, basically a point off. And hepping on over to the copper side of things. Copper just took off all night long and uh, <laughs> just kept going. And uh, up to 3.7795. 
And on copper, that would have been a move of 3.7795, almost 0.7. So at your 0.5, 3.769, you'd have been looking to tighten stops. So you're in here, you're making this copper trade, whatever your hours are that you're trading, but you're in, boom, long, long, long. You're seeing volume breakouts, you're happy. And volume's backing off. But you know what? At 3. Point, let's see here, what do we say again? Go over and get the numbers up. 3.769. You are right, seven, six, nine. It says tighten your stop, tighten it now. Well, look at that, right there at the exact same time. Bam, volume spikes. And it's saying tighten stops. Well, you know what, that means they're dumping their orders. So you get in and the deviation levels hit and you tighten your stop. So you tighten it up right now. As soon as it hits that price, you tighten it up right here. That bar closes out, you tighten it up right here. This bar closes out, you tighten it up right here. Boom, you're out. You got out. And basically, right near the high of the trade, just by using a simple take profit trailing stop method, not based on a number you saw historically, but an expectation of how far the market was going to move that day. And, uh, you know, natural gas, it was uh, an interesting one to watch. Uh, natural gas inventory report came out, and um, the number, the uh, storage number, actually came in lower um, than expected. But despite that, the numbers are higher than they were previously, and they're higher than they were a year ago. And so it uh, this basically, and, and also production is really, really high. And we sort of saw this happen in the oil as well, um, but sort of in, you know, reverse. But anyways, natural gas is, you know, it's sort of weird. You know, you think supplies up, storage down, but storage is higher than it was. I mean, all, all that adds up to more supply, price rises. So shows some demand happening again here in natural gas. And um, anyways, but natural gas just took off. And uh, you can get in. You can do a straddle play. And uh, if you're ever trying to do straddle plays on natural gas, understand it is a lot. It is a, basically how to put it. It's an illiquid market. So be very careful. And um, even on Nadex, if you're trying to do a, a play, um, I even saw it this morning. The quotes basically will, you know, basically like become non-existent for a few minutes, and, um, and then they'll open right back up. But it's, it's just an illiquid market. And so you're going to want to get in on a news play like before it, and then get out maybe five, ten, fifteen minutes after it. Um, in order to take advantage of trades like that on natural gas. But it can definitely move, and it can move big, as you can see right there. And, uh, I mean, that's just that's a rocket of a move. And you're talking you know, several percent up on the day right there. That's 3.2 right now. So I think it was like 4% at the max. And so just a huge move. And on natural gas, there was actually a move that was expected up to 3.5, 3.0. Oh, no, that's not right. Let's see, 3.6. There we go. 3.60 uh, was our 0.7. That's our uh, tightener stops, okay? And 3.653 was our take profits. Um, so we didn't get to 3.6563, but we did get to 3.600. And uh, we got to that, let's see, right, 3.60. We got to it right here. So tightener stop, boom, tightener stop again. As soon as that bar closed, this went up, tightener stop again. This went up, tightener stop again. Now what added to this factor? Look at this. It goes up. Comes down, breaks back up, and does so with lower volume, giving us a short signal or a get out signal. In fact, we've also hit the 0.7 deviation, which means get your get ready for a potential reversal or a flat market, and uh, we hit it. So, you know, very very helpful. You want to take advantage of any time you can go in and get on there on that. And let's see here, what other markets do we have that we can check out? So I know US CAD's been a little bit fun lately to play with. And uh, it's been moving a lot. So you can just see some of these big moves. You can go over here take advantage of them. And um, let's see. We also got, uh, let's, let's check out with a Euro Franc. Uh, that's just a fun trade. I'm just waiting for it to get back and hammer back down to start playing with that again. You can go in here and just scout this thing for, you know, three to five pips all day. <laughs> but uh, so see where they, you know, the central bank's just, you know, holding it up right there. So I'm wanting to come on back down so I can have some fun with that one. Um, do not expect to short here, but you can definitely expect to go long and just you know take trades off as just weird little things pop up and happen. Um, anyway, so we got that trade on, and then let's see. So we're still waiting. I have an alert set. What I would highly recommend is you put an alert for if the euro dollar gets below like one point twenty or euro franc gets below one point twenty twenty to be ready for that trade. Um, let's go ahead and hop back over. We really didn't uh, even finish up our fundamentals. We got to so much other stuff today, so I'm going to check that out. Hey, let me see. We, of course, did have our unemployment claims this morning. I think everybody's uh, pretty aware of that one. That one came out. 
And a um, little better than expected. Let's see here. We can tighten it up and look at the report and see the impact it had. Right here at 730. Everybody is all happy and, you know, go lucky. And, well, it's like, really, that's not enough. Um, that the unemployment claims are still too high for us to make any progress. So maybe we should turn on back down. And then we move on down. We got, um, let's see, FOMC member speaking at 9 o'clock. That, uh, you know, really didn't do any good. And then 10 o'clock, we had the crude oil inventory report come out. And crude was surprisingly flat today. So, um, you know, what's funny is uh, this is flat. <laughs> so, you know, you get a 90 cent move, a $900 move in crude, and uh, up and down, and that just feels flat after these uh, $4 moves that have been happening lately. But, um, yeah, I mean, you got 900 bucks down, 900 bucks up, 900 bucks back down, about 500 bucks back up. And um, it's just been a, an interesting wild ride in crude. And then hopping over and over, we got the 30 year bond auction, um, came in at expectations. So I'm sure the Fed made sure of that. And later tonight, we're going to have a few yen reports coming out. And uh, they have medium impact, but you definitely could have some U.S. yen, euro yen, pound yen, um, potential play setups you could look at. They got three reports coming out at the exact same time. Um, out of those three, they're going to have the, the, what they call their M2 money stock year-over-year report coming out. Um, the Bank of Japan governor is going to speak as well, um, and that's just whenever. Um, IMF meetings, of course, kicked off today. Um, the CGPI report, not really a big impact. The big report out of the 650 reports that you're going to be paying attention to is um, it's called the Tertiary Industry Activity Month-over-Month Month Report. Okay? Again, that's the Tertiary Industry Activity Month-over-Month Month Report. And let's see here if I can get you a site so you can be able to look that up. Um, let's see, they got to have an English option on here. So there we go. <laughs> you got to love Google Chrome. It'll take care of it for you. Um, anyway, so meti.go.jp forward slash, in my case, English. So unless you know Japanese. So meti.go.jp forward slash English. And uh, they'll be releasing their statistics and things like that for the reports that come out. You know, so the METI report is going to come out. What that measures is the total value of services purchased by businesses. And it's considered a big le leading in economic indicator in Japan. And um, basically, knowing that businesses are highly affected by market conditions, that the changes in their spending can be a big sign in either hiring, earnings, and investments, or lack thereof. So it can have a big impact on the yen. Um, and then hopping on over, again, that's 650 Central, 750 Eastern time tonight. So that's a U.S. yen, pound yen, you know, uh, dollar yen play, whatever you want to do there. And then looking on over, what do we got going on tomorrow as we wrap up the week on Friday? So we're going to have industrial production coming in on the euro. So uh, that'll be a little play for you if you're an early morning trader. And um, industrial production, pretty simple. It's just a change in um, inflation on basically uh, products produced by manufacturers, mines, and utility companies. So, and uh, it may, you know, may or may not have a big impact because Germany and France account for, you know, more than half of the Eurozone. But, um, and they released some earlier production data. So it's sort of a, usually not a surprise because they know what half of the number should be anyway. But um, despite that fact, the number has differentiated from the expectations. And then we got PPI and consumer sentiment. We'll wrap up with that here in just a second when we get back from this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain 
business and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We're wrapping things up here. And we got a little bit of time left in the trading day. Oil still sort of flat, not moving down. Uh, hoping for a little bit more move down there on the oil. But if not, risk is capped. Uh, I think I have like 20 bucks at risk um, on the trade. So anyways, we'll see if it works out. It'll be a nice profit. Have plenty of other trades that went really well today. Checking out the uh, Russell is getting closer. So getting closer to that gap, Phil. We got one more point to go. One and a half points left here. So we got a low of 25.4. So, yeah, basically a point left to go. If we can get just a little bit more, then uh, we're there. So uh, pushing on that uh, close on the Russell to get that gap fill. And going in on the S&P, seeing how close it is on the day. And uh, we can see right there, S&P is getting closer as well. So uh, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of potential uh, gap fill plays here. So it looks like a lot of the, the metals, indices, et cetera, 
are doing their gap fills. So for tomorrow, what do we got left that's coming up? Uh, we talked about the uh, Japanese reports coming out overnight. Uh, we also have industrial production in Europe coming out at 4 a.m., but, again, it's not a big surprise report because over half the information is already accounted for uh, with Germany and France already releasing their numbers on that, and they're, fat, they're over half that report um, calculation. So we got the PPI. That's going to be coming out at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern time, and uh, basically it's a leading indicator of consumer inflation. And um, basically just letting us know basically how much uh, have prices went up um, for the finished goods and services sold by the producers. And then looking on over, what else do we have going on? We got the uh, so we got core PPI. That's not as big as the PPI month over month. And uh, let's see here. That's By the way, that's going to be on the Department of Labor's website. So if you'd like to if you like log in all these and know where they're all at, dol.gov. So that's where... Um, the Department of Labor will be releasing the PPI and the core PPI information out there. And uh, then we're going to have the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report coming out. They have an expectation of 78.1 on that, and uh, which is actually be lower than the last reading. The last reading, they also to revise down the number before that. That number comes out at 855 Central, 955 Eastern. And uh, looking right here, University of Michigan Consumer, U-M-I-C-H dot E-D-U. And so you can hop on here, and you can find the report and everything else. And um, anyway, it's just uh, some it's interesting information on their site. But uh, anyways, we've got the UOM report going on. And then we'll move on over. We'll see. We're going to have um, – they also have an inflation expectation number. That doesn't matter. What really does matter is the consumer sentiment report they have on there. And then let's see. FOMC member Lacker is going to be talking at 1135 Central, 1235 Eastern. So that could have a little uh, effect. The one big thing, of course, we also have the IMF meeting going on right now. Um, and let's see, we got trade balance coming out of China sometime tomorrow. Who knows when? New loans coming out of China. Uh, that information, who knows, uh, the next several days. But information that's going to be coming out. And uh, they're projecting $665 billion, And that's the value of the new yuan denominated loans that are issued to consumers and businesses during the previous month. So... Uh, they're thinking that they issued six hundred sixty-five billion. Well, they issued seven hundred. Like last time, they they estimated six hundred five. They actually issued out seven hundred four billion in loans um, in China. So, anyways, but hopping on over the other big thing and a little bit interesting report that usually is not as big of a deal. Federal budget balance one o'clock tomorrow. Um, you know, I don't know if it's going to have a massive impact, but it definitely is very important right now with the uh, fiscal crisis. And this number does um, come out on a monthly basis, the eighth business day after the month ends. And it's the difference between what the government received and what it spent in the previous month. So it lets us know how close they are, are to running over that uh, fiscal cliff, not the, simply the fiscal cliff, but the actual uh, debt ceiling. And if that's going to be an issue sooner rather than later. Anyway, stay right here. We got a great show coming up for you. And uh, we'll be right back after this break with the new show. And I'll see you tomorrow.